Today, we're going to be talking about some new information circulating online that has many speculating that GameCube may be the next console headed to Nintendo Switch online. And I want to be very upfront. My personal prediction on this is that we will not see it until Nintendo Switch 2. So don't necessarily think that at the September Direct in 2024 on the current Switch we have today that we're going to learn about this thing. I think this is something further off, but there is some interesting info that we have to talk about that suggests that Nintendo could be gearing up the behind the scenes puzzle pieces, putting them in the correct places in order to bring GameCube over to Nintendo Switch Online. And you might remember that we had reports like this around Game Boy and Game Boy Advance emulation well ahead of when Nintendo announced those consoles officially coming to the service. And if you just look at the logical progression on where Nintendo Switch Online will one day end up years and years in the future, it makes all the sense in the world to one day see GameCube supported. So we'll unpack all the details. Before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your bell notification to join Summer Nation if you're new here. And I want to first start off by going through Nash Weedle's post, who is the person who's been spreading this updated patent around from Nintendo. Now, I want to make it clear that I'm kind of indifferent on Nash Weedle myself at this point in time. He's gotten some things in the past right. He also has put a lot of information out there that we are just waiting to see if it's accurate or not and we quite honestly cannot tell if it's accurate or not until we give it time to happen. The other thing that gives me a little bit of pause with this update is that he does not source the patent that he is discussing here, but he does have a screenshot of it. So I want the patent ID personally, so take all of this with a grain of salt, but you can see the following post which reads, and translated by the way, Nintendo seems to have GameCube emulation ready. It recently updated a patent based on this system, which joins other recent patents on cube console control. And the screenshot here in question says, in a game system according to a further embodiment, the game information storage medium contains at least two emulator programs, each of which correspondingly emulates two types of second game machines having different architectures from each other and from the architecture of the first game machine. The game selection program selects any of the emulator programs according to the game program of the game title selected by the player. Now, what that sounds like to me personally is that there are multiple emulation programs all into one application and depending on what game you pick is corresponds to what emulator actually launches. Now, I am fully expecting Nintendo at some point in time when the Switch 2 launches to relaunch Nintendo Switch Online probably day one with some kind of 2.0 service. We've seen all the slides suggesting that, of course, value added services for Nintendo account will roll forward to Nintendo's next-gen hardware. That's confirmed by them themselves. Naturally, you would expect that to include Nintendo Switch Online, your cl save cloud data, all your eShop purchases. We're heavily expecting this thing to have full backwards compatibility intact, and Nintendo's not gonna hit the reset button on an ever-changing, growing online service where they say, we're launching Nintendo Switch Online on Nintendo Switch 2. Oh, and guess what? It's starting out with the NES library of games and we'll slowly update these as time goes on. Like, they're not going to do that. Everything we have so far is going to roll forward, but one big revamp and user-friendly upgrade that I think Nintendo could provide to us is just having an NSO centralized app. This would be a great space to include all the additional features we want to see supported from Nintendo. Give us the option to message friends directly via text or voice chat. Give us the option to create voice chat rooms. Let's get rid of friend codes and do usernames like every other freaking console does at this point in time. And in that same hub of a Nintendo Switch online app, you could have your entire library of games to go through by system. You could maybe just sort them however you want. And if you pick the game, it's going to launch the corresponding emulator. That makes a lot more sense than having everything individually separated out with its own app. Of course, Nintendo might want to do something to lock away the more mature rated games that are being added to the service as they have in Japan and other regions around the world. But you could do stuff like that with parental controls. And I think this would be a really nice addition. Now, while I'm fully expecting not to see GameCube until Nintendo Switch 2, as I think that would be a really good justification and selling point for Nintendo to get you to upgrade and re-sign for the higher tier expansion pass. Not to mention they may create a third tier. It's not out of the realm of possibility. We might be going to something like 70 annually, which surprisingly is still way cheaper than the competition when you look around to the price increases for Sony and of course Microsoft doing a little bit different thing with Game Pass. But you get the idea, depending on how they sell it to us, I think it's the perfect system that has so many classics on it that fans will just want to upgrade to this tier or become an NSO subscriber for the first time. 
It's not to say that Nintendo Switch can't run GameCube games because of course it can. In fact, you just have to look at 3D Mario All-Stars, which flawlessly runs Super Mario Sunshine with some enhancements and tweaks and things, but that's entirely emulation. Nintendo has done that. Data miners have discovered that fully emulation is how they're pulling that off. But not only would it be a good time for Nintendo to get people to subscribe and switch over to Nintendo Switch Online 2.0 or whatever the, the big relaunch and revamp is for next gen hardware, but also we're in a period of time right now where Nintendo is heavily relying on their GameCube library of games to resell as standalone ports and remasters. Look at Metroid Prime Remaster in early 2023. That's already available to us. We're expecting Echoes and Corruption to come over at some point. Corruption, of course, being Prime 3 being the Wii game, but at Prime 2 Echoes is a GameCube game that will likely be coming over. You have Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, which is Nintendo's big game for May, getting that remake treatment, and many others that have been individually re-released or already, or that Nintendo may handpick still to come for a re-release. So I think they're gonna get all of those out out of the way and give them time to sell and breathe well before we get something like GameCube on NSO. I would love to see it happen right around the beginning of the console launch, which we are expecting to happen now early quarter one, most likely March 2025. But of course, nothing's official till Nintendo announces it. So keep that in mind. But I do think if they dropped it like right now this year, right after they're doing all these ports and remasters from the GameCube library and us individually purchasing them, it just makes that much less sense. Not to mention, you also have to realize that the file size of GameCube games is significantly bigger than N64 or Game Boy Advance or anything that we're emulating currently on the Switch. And with the storage situation, I don't know that it makes all the sense to run on a base model console that only has 32 gigabytes internal. So there's a lot of different reasons why Nintendo will probably save this as the big feature for Nintendo Switch 2. So even though there are some patent renewals and some interesting things that point to emulation and being able to switch between emulators directly in some kind of app, it doesn't mean this stuff is going to drop tomorrow. As I mentioned in the early point in the video, we had information and leaks direct screenshots actually that leaked out from Nintendo's research and development team out in Europe. And we knew about Nintendo working on emulators behind the scenes well before we got the official confirmation. And this could be another one of those stories that we have a little bit of tidbit of information that Nintendo's supposedly working on GameCube in the background. That is not a surprise to me. I think one day we will likely end up with the vast majority of Nintendo's systems available to play via this online service, and it will continue to be updated in a slow trickle feed. They're going to have to solve for the DS and 3DS problem with the touchscreen and hopefully they just sell us some kind of controller one day that has a touchscreen on there to alleviate that issue when playing of course in docked mode but Wii is on the table one day who knows if they'll ever tackle Wii U but if it has backwards compatibility to the Nintendo Switch library of games for the Switch 2 and then we also have a vast majority of Nintendo systems over the course of history playable on Nintendo Switch 2 that's going to be one powerhouse of a console that will support a large chunk of the libraries from all eras of gaming, which gets me very excited. So that's where I really want to hear from you guys at this point in the video. What do you make of all of this? Are you hyped for GameCube to come to Nintendo Switch Online? And what games would you most want to see? Are you like me and you think there's no chance Nintendo reveals or launches this thing on the current Nintendo Switch family of systems? Or do you think that that is a possibility? And I would love to hear your reasoning on why that might be. And finally, what are a few missing features from Nintendo Switch Online today that you would like to see added in in the revamped version that will launch supposedly alongside of Nintendo Nintendo Switch 2. So regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today, I do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments down below before you leave the video, as I do look forward to getting back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics. Go watch the video on screen next if you haven't already. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.